let us follow first few minutes close your eyes when you close your eyes you are aware of the body from the top of the head to the toes when I say awareness obviously we start our journey so awareness of the body be there do nothing so when you do nothing there is a rise in awareness which we say moving the mind within so you don't you know moving the mind within is not a literal phrase if it is literal then moving the mind within means that you are looking into the bones and the blood and other stuff inside the body so moving the mind means it is rise in awareness that results into sensation comfort and steadiness in the body we have to do these practices every day a couple of times that's why I've every time I have started giving you small easy practice 90% knowledge 10% practice now when you look inside you find sensation comfort and steadiness when you move inside further you find the space or unwanted thoughts feelings sensations etc So now I'm giving you one understanding. You have a you you have a living room. You know the space. Whether that space in the living room is filled with hundreds of articles or not, the space remains the same. Nothing happens to the space. You remove one article and you bring it another object or couch, etc. and we are aware of that space in spite the room is empty or full same thing happens with the mind the mind we may say filled with millions of unwanted unwelcome thoughts it doesn't matter that very space in the mind remains intact never destroyed what we do we get carried away by the articles means the thoughts in the mind why we get carried away because we focus our mind focus on the objects outside for peace and happiness then what is going to happen we will remain all the time busy until we leave the earth planet but we never think this busyness can get me anywhere what the eastern wisdom says see it says that mind lives in ignorance what should we do Asatoma Satagamaya Asatoma Satagamaya So we are invoking a prayerful attitude. What it means? O oh, existence, lead me from false to the real. what is false that keeps changing no no but i experience mirrors water it is false i experience highways are running behind me when i drive on the highway it is false i see the blueness of the sky it is false. i experience it so means what whatever i experience may or may not be true i experience fear inside it may not be true Medical science gives 50 reasons of anxiety and the fear and the 51st reason they say the causes are still unknown. 
Cause is your struggle. What do you mean? That is the false. So we have to move, examine anything that is false and we have to move to the real. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya This is Shanti Mantra from the from the Upanishad. What it means? Lead us, O oh existence, lead us from ignorance to wisdom. Ignorance is misconceptions, wrong notions. Wrong notions about what? I like, hence I must do it. It may be wrong. I dislike it, I should not do it. No. I have to see if I dislike and if it is right and good, I must do it. So there are millions and trillions of impressions of ignorance. That causes anxiety, anger, duality, problem, suffering, grief. So lead us from the false to the real. How? By removing the ignorance. That is the second. What is the result? Mrityoramamritangamaya means lead me from mortality to immortality or you can say freedom from the bondage of the body and mind because the body and the mind causes the emotional bondage these three masses teaching we should remember all the time 24 by 7 until we sleep in the night since we wake up in the morning you remember in the mind what do you mean by remembering should i think no do you think about the space in the room whether the room is filled with objects or not you are aware of the space it's a cognitive ability you are aware of that so you are aware of these three messages what happens the mortality to immortality means that we get rid of the bondage of fear of death fear of death brings anxiety duality conflict problems grief in our life it's a cognitive i recognize the knowledge is settled in the intellect. That is the highest meditation. Listening and learning from a teacher is the preparation for the mindfulness. Listening and learning, no, repeat listening and learning on your own with contemplation and reflection is meditation. Repeat learning means you repeat learning with discernment and dispassion. Just being aware of the space deeper inside. On that space everything is happening. Your body is moving, the mind has certain thoughts, or feeling and the sensations. So whatever is happening on the space is false. How to recognize whatever is changing is false. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti 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 Bring your awareness on the right hand Your awareness on the left hand Put both your hands on your eyes Open the eyes inside Bring the hands down Is mind clear? Yeah, I want to I just want to get some water before we start. Okay.
water is available all the time. All the time. Space is available to all of us at all the time so that we can move the body, we can change the position, we can work in the business or in our personal life. All of our pleasures is not possible without having a space around and we are thankless we are totally thankless to that existence around us we are in deep sleep we don't know whether we are breathing in or not breathing but the air is always available for us We don't think even. Same thing with all any of these five elements. The earth is always available. We crush the earth with our feet, with our anxiety, with our reaction, with our fight, with our being reactive. We are thankless creatures. Why? Because of the I thought. What is I thought? Ego. What is this ego? We mean we want to maintain a status of being an individual. What? Who is an individual? Individual means body, breath, mind, intellect, I thought, plus consciousness. So what happens when we are thankless? We create unfavorable circumstances, grief, pain, pleasure, fear in our life. Now see the other side of it. You wake up in the morning, you become aware what is nearest to you. The nearest to you is these five elements, the space. You are connecting consciously with that space. You are consciously connecting with the air. You just become aware. You just remind yourself that my existence as a particular person with a name in the form only because of these five elements and they do not send us the bill and we are thankless. So if we are thankful and we are grateful, we connect consciously, what happens? We should know it. If there is any benefit, then we should follow. If there is no benefit, then we should leave it. That's our uh, consumer attitude of the mind. Mind, sense, unconsciously, even unconsciously, my friend, at the time of the birth, we are born and by crying we use the mom as a consumer. Think. Think. We wet the bed, we cry. We are acting as a consumer. Mom, come here. I cannot speak. It doesn't mean that you should not do my work. Change the bed. We are a consumer. As long as we are a consumer, we will continue to suffer. We will continue to react and fight. We have come with that being a consumer. We will die as a consumer. In relationship, what do you mean by marriage? Marriage simply means I want to be a consumer. Consumer? Yeah. I want to earn money. I want to be a consumer. Unless we clearly understand that being a consumer, there is no remedy of my fear, anxiety, duality, conflict. No, no, it is not so. I'm very kind. I donate money to the to some uh, NGO, then what? Did you ch change your mind? 
from being a consumer to a contributor. You donate $1 billion, but you are still a consumer. That billion dollar is wasted. Why? You did not, uh, we, didn't, we, do, we did not change our behavior and attitude. Ten girls are there. And mine says, you know, out of the ten, that girl should be my soulmate. Again, you are a consumer. I can give you millions of examples. Our mind in ignorance, in delusion, constantly think and speaks and acts like a consumer. As long as it continues to work like a consumer, you are going to suffer from anxiety, duality, conflict, delusion, anger, hesitation, reaction, and that we have been doing it every day for weeks and months and years together and expecting a change in my life. What is that change I'm expecting? I want to be in peace, happiness, love and wisdom. It will never happen. I have to change my attitude inside. It doesn't, it does not uh, take it does not take too much of effort to change. You wake up in the morning and you connect to the space all around you, infinite space, where the entire world of 8 billion people, all the living species, all the events and incidents takes place. I just become aware of that. Same way I become aware of the breath. Thank you. Now what happens? You, it only needs a mental state. So instead of a consumer, because you are a doer, so you are a consumer, so you say, no, it is because of you I am alive today, because of the space and the air and the water. You, you have to just say in your mind, every day, without fail. Before going to sleep, you have to say the same thing. So what happens from a consumer you first connect consciously because the space is unconscious so i have to i'm conscious so i have to connect they are already connected to me that's why i'm able to breathe that's why i'm able to speak that's why i'm able i'm alive today when i wake up in the morning it is because of these five elements No, I'm very busy, you know, I have to settle the score with my enemy. And now my honey is not listening to me. So I have to also file a divorce. Oh, I'm, I'm very, absolutely busy. <laughs> I'm absolutely busy in my life. And we want in a spiritual awakening, not possible. We have to connect consciously. Spirituality means infinity which includes everything, which excludes nothing. So I have to start the journey by consciously connecting to this. What is going to happen if I'm connecting consciously? I become a contributor and I'm a grateful. So when I'm a contributor and a grateful, what happens? This mind becomes very soft. It becomes humble. It drops that sense of ego. It does not remain the consumer. The idea of being a consumer inside drops. You are doing the same thing. It does not mean you are not doing anything. You are doing the same thing, same business, everything. But the inner mental state and the attitude change. You see, let us understand in a different way. That is the step number two that we are learning. Understand in a different, you wake up in the morning. Now this mind is guided by the likes and dislikes, reaction, anger, anxiety. It has all those impressions, including the fear. So we feel that mind is empty, but the mind carries forward those impressions in our thought, speech and action. Do whatever you want to do, but still it will carry forward. So in mind should not carry forward. So I wake up in the morning consciously even for five minutes. 
I connect myself consciously, I, contrib I become a contributor, and then I am grateful to the existence. Existence? I don't know the existence. No, then, even then. What, then what? Am, am I not alive? Am I alive because of my own effort? So I'm not grateful to that. The moment you have started thinking consciously that I'm connecting myself, I'm contributing and I'm, I am grateful. Instead, the mind carries the past impression, it carries these impressions. So I change my stand from being a consumer to a contributor, being grateful. Where, how it happens, just it takes few minutes every day. That is the secret of Karma Yoga. The step number two is that I have to, I have to think, speak and act. It's more a mental attitude that I change my mental state inside before I think, speak and act. So what happens? Now I'm grateful, so my mind is now filled with the calmness. Now, calmness is there before I think, speak and act. During I think, speak and act. And after I think and speak and act. You know what this is, what Eastern wisdom says? This is, means that you are a great religious person. That is the message Jesus gave in the Bible. That is the message all the religions, religious leaders give in the Bible. And we start thinking in other way. Because of the existence, I'm alive, I'm working hard, I live my personal family and social life. So there is a law of the existence which is helping me to keep alive. That is why I shift my stand from being a consumer to a contributor to being grateful. And I can bet you, you do it for seven days, you will discover that now you meet the favorable condition and situations in your life. The fear and the anxiety has no place in your life. That is the true, being a true religious person. First step. And now what happens, the second step, when you continue to do it, you find that vast consciousness all around. That is being spiritual. You have found the real thing. That is the true message of our mastery. So the step two focuses on that I understood what is real self. Now how to think, speak and act in our daily life? Should I leave any action? I have to check that action is right, proper and good. I will continue to do it. I should remove the likes and dislikes from the action which is right, proper and good. I should recognize that this action is good, right, I must do it. I should not. No, but sometime it happens, you know, I don't like what is right and good. So I escape. When you escape, you create an unfavorable condition in your life. That is what is known as unfavorable condition. I have repeated hundreds of times. It is sin. I have committed a sin. What that means, you know, it's, it's about commission and omission. I escape what is right and good because I dislike it. So I don't do it. I'm committing sin. I have to think in this way. To become first a religious person, then I become a seeker. Then I enter into the journey of the self -wisdom. Very clear, clearly understood and different. Do you have a do you have a morning practice that you do to put yourself in that mind?
Yes, I was reading a book on how to sharpen your memory. I read 50 pages. When I returned to my office, I forgot where I kept the book. That is what you're asking a warning sign. <laughs> don't, don't ask those questions which has no value. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, <laughs> now the simple answer that I should do first, I invoke the existence to be thankful. I should do the pr one practice that I told you relaxation in the self awareness practice every day without faith. So what is going to happen, this mind will remove the ignorance, then you will naturally remember that you have to do these practices. <laughs> okay. You're asking a warning. I can give you another example of that. There are 10 girls. You see why we forget. I'm answering that question also. And I'm also answering what should we do. The ten girls and you look each and every one and the mind says, oh, she is my soulmate. <laughs> you are young, so that's why I'm giving an example of the girls, you know. So, one girl in a group session, you know what happened? I was giving this example. She said, no, uh, you are uh, attached to the girls. I said, at least, you know, I'm not attached to you. Well, Sometimes people mistake it. Anyhow, so you now you see that. Pay attention to this. When you choose one out of the ten, you have excluded the nine. You have excluded the nine. Yeah, because you have chosen one. This is what I call the discernment. You need not to practice. You just should have a cognitive ability. You should be aware of that. Oh, I have chosen one. So I'm not concerned about other nine. How intelligent, how beautiful they are. It doesn't matter to me. And you are not caring those nine girls. But your care is on what you choose. Clear? And choosing one is also a natural focus. Everything is very clear at a very high level. If you are the highest seeker, you is not only you understand, you settle into that knowledge. Anytime your mind says, no, I have to rush to that place. It is a focus. It is a natural focus. Now I have to do that, you know, I remember, I have to attend the session. So you texted me just five minutes. So your focus was somewhere else and then you remember. No. <laughs> Don't tell me, this is how we read the mind of others. <laughs> 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 we don't tell, but it does not mean that we don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, now see what happens. Focus means a desire. Wherever you focus, so I desire something in the world outside, whether it's an object, it's a person, it's a thing, it's a money, it's a car, any damn thing. So simply declaring that one out of the ten girls is going to be my soulmate. Are you still free from anxiety, fear? Who knows that girl will say, I don't want you. The girl says, I don't like you. What is the meaning of this? Understand. It means when you desire anything in the world whether it is an object or a relationship or a boy or a girl or anything you have chosen that moment gives you some kind of a short-term peace and happiness 
at the surface level but deeper inside deeper in the same mind you have anxiety you have likes and dislikes if she agrees with me if she does not agree with me if she follows me if she does not how much we focus how much we desire whatever we desire in the world outside so i'm using three words focus desire anything we desire and focus on the world outside one side of that coin of the focus is pleasure in imagination other side is likes and dislikes anxiety reaction to if if and but is there if she agrees with me she is very beautiful she should be my soul made i'm so happy if she and now i have a fear and anxiety anything any object tell me any object whether it's a billion dollar if someone steals if and but is always there that is where i started this you have to listen to it so i if i if i analyze that i have been desiring focusing on the objects people in the relations in the world it comes with a price that price is my anxiety my fear my fr you didn't sleep for about a week for such a small thing yes you proved my uh, you proved this principle and now see since morning when you are a contributor so now your focus is on the existence that keeps me alive makes me alive made me alive today and then you have a desire that i desire real self where is the real self it is inside you think i desire real self you take your mind inside i desire real self you do one practice you will never forget you repeat it until and until continue until you never forget every time you wake up and before going to sleep you have only one desire for the real self other activities of the world outside will continue you already know your business what you have to do you know it you know it and if there is a problem so you are clear without likes and dislikes you can solve it that is the secret of karma yoga that is the secret of the second step but let us go little deeper i desire for the real self when you desire for real self there is no two and the real self is not going to leave you so where is the fear where is the anxiety where is the duality where is the conflict if you make that real self your honey that honey is not going to leave you you make any one your honey outside any one there must be an expectation and you don't fulfill the expectation she is going to leave you. or she is going to fight with you or you have the expectations if your expectations are not fulfilled once if you have understood clearly what is going to happen now every every time you wake up in the morning you are doing the frag oh existence not only that you contribute mentally emotionally to your parents who gave you the birth now you are acting your actions are totally has a different mental attitude you are contributor first to the existence then you come to the parents Oh, at least parents you know i must thank mentally you mentally you need not to express it out it is better if you express it outside and formally or mentally you start doing the mentally you know i'm thankful to my parents you know at least who gave me a human birth that's why i'm listening to 
this crazy beer guy. There's no chance. There's no chance. As I'm born as a physicist. No, my, my, my parents are crazy. No, they are crazy. That's why they made you a human being. At least you should be contributed. Mentally, emotionally. They may be wrong. They are 100% wrong. But one contribution bypasses all the all their complaints. Same thing that you have to you know, why you, you are acting by, by thinking mentally. Thinking is also an action. What we are learning, we are learning how to get rid of those sins and demerits that we have to face every day in our life. And then we get into anxiety once we have a fear and that fear remains for a couple of days after that we are relaxed and after that again the same journey how many times you were fe <laughs> you have a fear <laughs> just last one same stuff you get rid of this so first contributor to the existence second contribution to your parents third is the knowledge plus the teacher why teacher because the humility shines no you have that humility but still we do it so humility uh, and also I am thankful and grateful to all those great masters who have passed on this knowledge and the wisdom to discover the real self and I am focused on this. And then because whether it's an ant or elephant or a tiger, whether it's my pet or whether they all are a part of the same existence of which I am a part. So I should respect them. Respectfulness is not being a consumer, but being a contributor. So I just become aware of everything that is a universe holds. It takes five minutes and you do it every day, followed by one practice, you will never forget what you were talking to me. action any action in your life you wake up in the morning and you your mind in a hurry and mind says no i have to meet that guy and i have an appointment you do that action you succeed no problem but our action is guided by being a consumer find out your appointment And being the consumer mindset is the mental state and mental attitude. We need not to do anything. We are doing every, we are need not to do anything outside. Let us continue to do whatever you are doing excellently, but change the mental attitude inside. Mental attitude, you think I'm going to meet the friend to contribute in his evolution and in his growth. growth. Well, how? Oh, there is a contract to be signed. You change your entire mental state and attitude. Why I'm talking about this? We are known by our actions. <laughs> you may say that I'm a great monk, but <laughs> your action does not match it. Oh, I know what the heck this guy is. <laughs> Do you see that? But that attitude attitudinal change must first come to the mind before I express before I think before I before I speak before I act this is the step number two I have written very very I don't know whether you have re read it or not you don't have a time oh do you want some practice to remember that you have to read the book <laughs> don't tell me <laughs> Yeah, I know you got the answer. <laughs> you see that? Uh, so you see, see, if you have read it, it is not there because I briefly written. Otherwise, it should have been thousands of pages. So you see that you now now you see so that mental attitude. 
that mental state of dropping being a consumer drops your ego. It happens silently. And when it drops your ego, your fear goes. Fear melts away. Anxiety is gone. You find the favorable situation in your life. That is the step number two. It's such a beautiful step. Now you said to remind me memory, you know, I remember a couple of things. So I will just, you know, a non-seeker demands, oh, for a few moments you were a non-seeker. You said, now how to remember? <laughs> <laughs> now that non-seeker, I don't say non-seeker, I will say non-seeker's mind deliberately focus on the objects of the world outside, people of the world outside, that I have a lot of work to do in my, in my external world. It is a deliberate attempt. And that deliberate attempt comes because the mind is dictated by strong likes and dislikes. And strong likes and dislikes contains the spices of fear, anxiety, duality in a conflict. There you get it. You have to listen to it again and again. Just before that, I have a client from Aust Austria. Uh, no, no, but first let me complete. So non-seekers mind internally you know that spark is very that is only a spark so one side there is a spark and on the one side there is a big thousand volt light of the mind that thousand volt of the mind says i will do what i like even then when i go into anxiety or duality or a fear or a conflict doesn't matter but that spark says, do you know what is right? No, I know what is right. But still, I am not able to do it. So it's my problem of ignorance. It's my problem of analysis. I do not analyze what I am doing, with what motivation I am doing, with what mental attitude I am doing. Because that spark is there. Spark gives you some hint. But you said, who cares this part? Ah, let us do this. Let us engage ourselves in being a consumer. Follow the likes and dislikes. Oh, then what happens? Anxiety comes for a day and then it will go away. No, it is creating more impressions. It is creating more fears. It will reshape my personality and attitude. So what a non-seeker in Gita, in Upanishad, so there is a story about the non-seeker who says, I know what is right, don't teach me, but I'm not able to practice it. I know what is wrong, I'm not able to keep away from myself what is wrong. I engage myself into what is wrong. Remember the story, ten girls are there, you have to choose when you have chosen one soulmate. You have not chosen the real soulmate inside. That is the meaning. I know what is wrong. And I'm not able to keep away from it. I act as if I am directed by some unknown power that is seated in my heart. Many people say to me, I know what is right and good. I have understood what you guided me. But what should I do? Some unknown power inside me is forcing me to do the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. Are you getting it? <laughs> I have to change. But, no, no, but I have to, but I cannot change, you know, I'm t telling you that some unknown power in the force is forcing me. Why don't you understand? No, I understand. I understand. Many people ask me, I understand. I said, I understand. Do you have an intellect? Yes, I have an intellect. You know that you have a free will. What it means? I have a free will to choose a particular action or to refrain from it. 
Do you have that liberty? Yes, I have a liberty. Why you don't you choose what is right and good if you have an intellect? Why don't you choose? When? 24 by 7. Dad is crazy over you. You have a free will. You, you have a choice to act the same way your dad is acting. You have another choice. You go with the humility, dad. You are my dad. I refrain from saying anything to you. I will look into what you said to me, reflect on it, and I'll come back to you. Would you please calm down? It only comes with that attitude of being a contributor. It will never come to your mind if you are a consumer. It's not a question that you are right or wrong. It's a question of your attitude. For example, you fight with the dad and you prove that you are right. You go back home, you are still disturbed. Your dad is also disturbed. Now your mental attitude has changed. You say, whatever I have just said to you, you relax and you are dad also said that Nick is a great guy you know he has never said like this you know you you have created a favorable situation so same thing applies to the business this is the step number two is very important that's why I'm laying a lot of stress on this and the seeker says in the Gita what the seeker says. Seeker says, Krishna, Krishna is a teacher. Oh teacher, I have understood now what I have understood that why I am doing I should not be doing. I realized it is because of the likes and dislikes, it is because of the ego and where there is the ego, ego will remain as a consumer. But I don't know what to do. I know that I don't know what I don't know what to do. So he begs to the teacher, guide me the path of the Eastern wisdom, what is right and good. That is what the humility is. Why to guide? Because I will follow, as you say. Why I should follow? I will experiment whether it is true or not. That is known as the belief pending inquiry. I will not believe until I translate this principle into my action. <coughs> it took me a couple of years to learn. My <laughs> dad was also a different kind of a person. First thing he used to blast is to be angry and hesitated. So it took me a great courage when he was angry and I said, Dad, will you, like, will you like to have a cup of tea? Should I prepare for you? He got more angry. I said, no, I will prepare two cups of tea. Why you are not listening? I said, I will only listen to you if you calm down after taking a cup of tea which I have prepared for you. What logic you have how you dare to be angry over me. So in two or three sessions, after two or three times I did it, he was scared of be becoming an angry over me. Relationship improved. Everything. It is the rest is the history. But that teaching came from my master. He asked me why you are so much concerned about his anger. You accept his anger at the emotional level and then you, you are fighting with yourself. Because there was a morality issue. What is that morality issue? We were educated in, since our childhood that we should not dare to say anything against our dad. Even if he is wrong. So there was a morality issue and I was suffering.
and then I recognized much later after 10, 20 years, he was right. He helped me to evolve. Why he helped me to evolve? My master guided me to have that level of endurance. Don't allow his anger to enter inside you. Let it remain separate. So I learned the art of that discernment and dispassion, and it changed. There was a tremendous change in the life. But I did not accumulate the sense. Why? I did not become the consumer. If I want to be a consumer of some pleasure, I also naturally become the consumer of anger of others, reaction of others. I'm a consumer, so I, I may be a consumer of anything from the, coming from the world. <laughs> think of this, my friend, think, think. Do you still remember the story of old monk and young monk? Which one? Old monk and the young monk uh, put the girl on the shoulder, crossed the river, and the old monk uh, kept all the impressions in his mind. And he said that he come. Uh, he said to the young monk that you have committed sins. That crazy mind, mental attitude. You could not change your mental attitude living with the teacher for twenty years, and this young guy was living for one year. He changed his entire life. Oh, he said, I left that girl at the bank of the river and you are still remembering. My goodness. This is the attitude. This is the mental state. This is the mental state. We have to live into that mental state. So we have a choice. We have a free will. Whether we live like a old monk and continue to suffer throughout the life. Or, like a young man, oh, I've done it, that's good. Old monk said that I will complain against you to the master. He was totally careless. And they both went to the master, and the master, old monk complained. Master said, those who blame and complain, they need to change themselves. I know what you both are doing. You need not to guide me. You need not to impress me. You are consumed by that girl since the time you saw her crossing the river even after that. You are guided by the attachment and detachment you were in fact jealous that why this young man carrying the girl on her shoulder, why it should not be on my shoulder. You were dreaming, imagination. That is what the hallucination. That is what brings the anxiety. So morality on one hand, mind is divided. Ah, morality and ethics, but still I enjoy. I enjoy this, but I want to prove that I am immoral. That is the problem of all the religion. We don't understand what needs to be done. I have to change my mental attitude. Mental state. If the priest, you know, we, we heard a lot of wonderful, I would say wonderful news for the priest, you know. They engage themselves in all kinds of stuff. Because they don't, they have not changed their mental attitude. So preaching is one thing and doing is other thing. So there is a big gap. You are the greatest non-religious person serving the God in their religious places. Yeah. 